that wraps into crypto. Crypto is my chosen horse. It out, outforms everything in this type of cycle. Like technology, it's driven by the basement of the central banks of the fiat currency market, particularly the world's uh, reserve currency of the dollar, but all of them together, really. And in addition, it's driven by the secular trend. The adoption trend of crypto is huge. It's now 425 million wallets. It keeps going up every single year. Even last year in a bear market, it grew 40%. So in the next coming years, we will probably get that number up to a billion pretty fast. So we've got a huge change to come. The ongoing adoption. We've got central bank digital currencies to come. We have, which is, whether you like it or not, still an adoption of blockchain technologies. We also have, you know, payments rails and all of that kind of thing going on. Plus, people are looking at tokenizing asset prices like bonds and stuff like that. So the financial world is moving up to blockchain, which is a core thesis of mine. In addition to that, we have now the on-ramps for the average punter, which is the ETF. That, I think, where the ARC gets the first one across, the August 13th, 18th, whatever it is, that will open the floodgates. I think prices will be rising into that anyway. My forecast forward to a much higher price. I'm not going to give a forecast because all of you dicks on Twitter try and then fight me over and say, see, see, three years later, you got that wrong by whatever. It's, it's such a waste of time. I'm sorry that I can't help you more because you don't deserve it. Well, many of you do. Just some of you, those trolls on Twitter, you don't. Um, and I'm a bit burned by them. So I, I do expect higher prices. And I think that the Bitcoin ETF starts driving that narrative. And we're seeing the regulatory landscape change. The UK is stepping forward as well. So the globalized regulation. So I'm incredibly immensely bullish. The business cycle leans into this. The Bitcoin halving cycle to me is actually just the uh, business cycle and the debt refi cycle. Doesn't matter. You can still have, I don't say it's not valid. It's just happened to be at the same timing. So whether they both exist independently of each other or they're both the same thing, it's, it's irrelevant for the story. But I think it's actually the big macro cycle, the debt refi cycle coming from that very excited about the space. I don't, don't shill me all your small tokens. I have no idea. I don't look at any of that stuff, really. I have an asset management business, exponential age asset management that invested digital asset hedge funds, fund the funds. Their job as hedge funds is to figure that stuff out. I'm not smart enough to figure out what small token. So you can shill me all day. It doesn't make any difference. I've been pretty public in the three tokens that I like, and I remain just chilly. Um, you know, I don't store anything on exchange. I don't, I don't do yield, even though I think yield is a great opportunity for those who want to take that risk. It's not for me. And so we just continue to wait for this to evolve and average in when I can. I've got some cash. NFT space has been really interesting as well. It's been in a ridiculous bear market and has been taking the pain. NFTs are just a lag domino of the business cycle of the ETH economy. Uh, they're the asset side. Remember, rents were the last shoe to fall in the business cycle of um, the regular economy. Well, NFTs are the assets. When nobody's got any gains to recycle and prices haven't been rising, then what we tend to do is we can we will see people liquidate the cash and then there's no buyers around. As soon as people start making money again, they're like, look at me and my punk. And um, they want to start showing off. They want to start getting invested in stuff. They want to start taking more speculative bets. So that cycle returns. We've seen a bifurcation. Remember, ETH bottomed first before Bitcoin. ETH bottomed first. And what we've seen is the high-end art market in crypto bottoming first. And then we will start to see, I think, probably punks bottomed, stuff like that will bottom. And a bunch of these things will go to zero. Some will come through. I'll talk maybe on the other side of the show about what kind of NFT projects I think are going to last through to the other side. Not the specific ones, but what type of projects interest me. So I still see a lot of people expecting the second bare leg lower. I don't think that's coming. Of course, we'll get corrections. We'll probably get a scare on the way too, where everybody thinks the world's going to end. But I don't see anything but an ongoing forward-looking liquidity cycle and business cycle. The business cycle to me is bottoming in the next month or two, and that will start moving higher. But that phase of the business cycle is the sweet, sweet magic. When the economy starts recovering, asset prices start booming, and inflation, which is lagging, continues lower. The Fed, I think, are purposely raising rates late into the cycle because they want inflation as low as possible so they can cut rates as low as possible. When it comes to the debt refi silent cycle, you've all heard me talk about this around. Um, and if you don't, go and look at the stuff of the Everything Code on YouTube or on the platform where it's in much more detail. But the debt refi cycle comes towards the back end of this year, 2024, 2025. So I think we'll see monetary printing, a cutting of rates, coming over that period of time. The monetary printing will be brought forward if the banking crisis comes back again. My view is there's a potential later this month we start to see some cracks appearing there again and that narrative comes back. Maybe it doesn't. We'll wait and see. It's not my core thesis, but it's something that I'm observing. That would bring back money printer goes burr more cowbell, as I say, a bit faster. So we expect that to happen. The liquidity cycle, Global Macro Investor Weekly Liquidity Cycle Index, again, I've written about on Twitter. I've written the free GMI newsletter. If you haven't signed up to that, find it on Twitter under my tweets. Comes out every Sunday. Really important research, or obviously, anybody on the platform, you get it in Real Vision Pro Macro in much more depth and much more 
deeper conversations myself or in GMI if you're feeling fancy and flush with cash because it's very expensive. So the forward-looking indicators are suggesting all of this goes up from here onwards. My view is that we will see, as I said, rate cuts to come. The Fed are purposely late because they need to get all inflation expectations crushed. The one-year break-evens are already, so that's expectation of inflation one year advance already about 1.3 percent so it's come right down the true inflation inflation gauge of current inflation is about 2.1 percent this morning i think we break through two percent in the coming month and on our way to zero so i think inflation is forward-looking inflation is zero ppi is zero ppi across europe is negative ppi in china is negative ppi leads cpi cpi is going to head lower out of all of you going yeah but what about wages and what about rents and core sticky it's always lagged it is every single time lag it's purposely lag just the definition of how these things work so we are seeing already forward-looking indicators of rents coming down the core cpi is mainly driven by that that's what the services inflation is wages are already deflating starting to come lower and we will see ongoing uh, deflation from that uh, core cpi wherever it settles down at will be amenable to rates being back what they need to be which is at or below trend rate of gdp growth again part of the everything code which i think trend rate of gdp growth in the united states is 1.75 percent so it's kind of all to play for here early cycle this is the spring the macro spring we call it the gmi spring that quadrant where growth stocks take off all the growthy stuff happens inflation is falling unemployment's falling and growth is basing and starting to pick up we will see that the forward looking indicators even the ism the simple stuff like the ism the new orders index those kind of things inventories and new orders are starting to pick up it's all over the place and look the fed know it they're not stupid they know that the cycle turned a long time ago. They know the forward-looking indicators where they are. They know inflation lags. But as I said, really for them, it's to undershoot inflation. That's what my, now my core view is they want to undershoot because it gives them the excuse to fire the bullets that they want to fire. Unemployment will rate, rise. It won't rise as much as other cycles because structurally there are just less people in the labor force. And so there's so many retirees. When you look at aggregate total economy, it's a very different picture. Unemployment rises percent, percent and a half, and um, inflation 